This is a quick study guide for Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado, or Amontillado, depending upon how serious you want to be about the Spanish accent. You didn't study, you really should read the material, but you didn't, and so now you need a quick study guide, a quick couple minutes to get the story into your belt so you're not embarrassed in class, so you can actually participate, look smart, maybe read the story later, but at the very least, you'll have the basics down, you'll pass the test, and everyone will be happy. All right, so the key is the first paragraph of the story. Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. At length I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled. But the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when the retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. So this is a revenge story. The main character eventually buries his foe alive. Montresor is the main character, and Fortunato, who insulted him, gets bricked up in the catacombs underneath the Montresor mansion. And that's all we ever get. You hear him say, when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. And that's all we ever get. We never know what the insult was or how serious it was. Let's take a look at some of the material. The first sentence is key. The thousand injuries I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. We never learn what were the injuries and what was the insult. It's not in the story. Irony and double meanings. Amontillado is a type of sherry. The irony is that Fortunato, supposedly an expert in wine, is a connoisseur, seems not to understand that Amontillado is sherry. So here you have Montresor using Fortunato's own knowledge against him and Poe, throughout the story, makes Fortunato look ridiculous. And for whatever reason, Montresor is livid and furious and plots a revenge scheme against Fortunato and lures him to the catacombs and buries him alive. More irony. Your teacher's going to ask about irony in the story. There's a ton of it. Tresor, Montresor, the main character, could translate and does translate into French as my treasure. This is ver verbal irony. Fortunato is the opposite of being lucky or fortunate. Uh, he dies in the end. Lucrezi or Lucchese is for loot or money. Um, something that the main character Montresor keeps mentioning, let's take it to Lucrezi for his opinion, and Fortunato keeps saying, no, I'll do it. De Grave can be read as the grave and is actually what Fortunato is heading toward. And the quote in the book, in the story, is, I broke and reached him a flagon of de Grave. He emptied it at a breath. His eyes flashed with fierce light. The irony is rich in the story, and it's all over the place. It takes place during Lent, a carnival and happy season, and it is everything but. Fortunato is dressed as a clown, a, co a court jester, and another bit of irony, he's dressed with those the conical cap and bells, and he's actually heading towards his doom. Types of irony. Situational irony. The main character, Montresor, says, I was pleased to see him. I thought I should never have done wringing his hand. This is ironic because he's pleased that he can now kill him. Montresor says also, early in the story, that he continued to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that smile now was at the thought of his immolation. This is the dramatic irony because Montresor is smiling at Fortunato, and only the audience knows. The readers know why. The catacombs are underground passageways, usually for tombs and wine or uh, root storage. There's vocabulary throughout the story. These are some of the main words. You can pause if you need to look over them, if they're some of the vocabulary words your teacher has chosen. 
Characterization, what kind of person is Matrasaur? He is concerned with honor to the point that he kills Fortunato over an insult. He's cruel. Throughout the story, he taunts Fortunato by showing him a trowel, which is what he uses to brick him up and kill him. He's manipulative. He entraps Fortunato using his own perception, his own ego against him. He is somewhat sociopathic or psychopathic. Those are strong words, I know, but he commits murder and there is little evidence of remorse. At the end of the story, he says, here's, basically, he says, here's the story. It's been 50 years and no one has been down there to visit the bones of Fortunato. Fortunato, again, the ironic name, this is a key point to use, um, especially because the irony is right, is so obvious and right in your face. Um, <clears throat> Other reasons why it's ironic is because it is the opposite of what we would expect, which is the definition. Situational, dramatic, and verbal irony. Um, the verbal irony that we haven't talked about is that Montresor, uh says to Fortunato, he implores Fortunato to return to his home and not come down to the catacombs with him, but that is reverse psychology, and it's brilliantly written in the story. The dramatic irony, of course, the readers know what's going to happen, and Fortunato keeps on coughing, and Montresor pretends to be concerned, even though we know he is not. The horror is intense because Montresor is now underground with Fortunato, plotting his doom and death. The story. Would the story be better or worse if you knew what Fortunato did to Montresor? I don't know. That's a question that you might get asked. We don't know what Montresor said or did, and I don't know if it makes much of a difference. Um, it would be a good what-if question on an essay or short answer. The Montresor family motto translates into no one insults me with impunity, and it proves that Montresor cannot let the insult be forgiven. And he uses it as a crutch. He uses it to justify the unjustifiable in Montresor's murder, or in Fortunato's murder, excuse me. Character traits. Um, the, the main character, Montresor, manipulates Fortunato by using his own ego against him. Fortunato is very proud. He has a lot of pride, and he's competitive, and Montresor uses that against him. The setting is in Italy during carnival season, probably in Venice and mid-1800s. The beginning of the story with the setting, the beginning is a crazy carnival, costumes, lights, noise, parties, the end is dark and silent and still and horrible. The mood, the tone, horrifying, Montresor toying with Fortunato as a cat would toy with a mouse. Fortunato is unsteady and drunk when he is buried alive. Montresor is calculating and efficient. They, they are opposites. Uh, Montresor is the protagonist. Fortunato, Fortunato is the antagonist. The narrator is somewhat unreliable because of the things he does not explain. Symbolism, there's, it's all over the place. The cask of Amontillado, um, it's kind of rare wine. It's a motivating factor to both. The Montresor's coat of arms symbolizes revenge. The fool costume that Fortunato's in symbolizes his foolishness and greed. Here's a look at an interpretation of the coat of arms. The carnival symbolizes an artificial material world. You could use that. The catacombs symbolize Montresor's personality, which is pleasant on the outside but dark on the inside. These are all things to use on your test or in class. Darker themes. The story is very clear. Montresor is asked by Fortunato, are you a mason? And Fortunato is confused by Montresor's answer because Montresor says, yes, yes. And, and here's the dialogue, right? Uh, Fortunato says, then you are not of the Brotherhood. Montresor says, how? And then Fortunato says, you are not of the Masons. And Montresor actually act, answers in the affirmative. And Fortunato says, you impossible a Mason? A Mason. I replied, a sign, right? Fortunato wants a sign that he is in the Brotherhood, that he is a Freemason. And then Montresor is slick. He says, it is this, I answered, producing from beneath the folds of my rocalaire, that's a cape, a trowel, 
You jest, he exclaimed, recoiling a few paces, but let us proceed to the Amontillado. So in his face, Montresor puts the instrument of death in front of Fortunato, and in a way points fun at the Masons. He is really direct in his insulting them, especially because, and here's what you might not know, Edgar Allan Poe's father, or I should say adoptive father, was a Freemason, and they were not friends at the end. Poe's father abandoned him, or let him loose, actually, and disconnected himself with him. And uh, John Allen, who was Poe's adoptive father, was a Freemason. Um, the symbolism is there. Here we see that Poe is getting revenge on both his father and the Masons. He mocks the Masons by producing a trowel, a tool to spread cement used by brick Masons. He figuratively, quote-unquote, kills his father by luring Fortunato to his death. Fortunato also mentions, mentions the Brotherhood, one of many names for an occult secret society, was the Brotherhood of the Snake, hence the Brotherhood reference. And here we go. It's the family coat of arms of Montresor that says, a huge human foot of gold in a blue field, and the foot crushes a serpent rampant whose fangs are embedded in the heel. Poe is crushing the snake, he is getting back, into his, back at his father, and he, in effect, kills him. There is intense emotion. There is interest in medieval past in the story as well. There are some exotic places in terms of the setting. There is a mention of failed love, which you can look at if you pause the video. And then there is some mysticism related to the story itself. Okay, 11 and a half minutes. Go do well in your class.